Welcome to In the Kitchen with Dinah. Today, I'm gonna make gingerbread cookies. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Dinah. Gonna taste good, I know. Gingerbread cookies are probably one of my favorite holiday cookies at Christmas time to make besides my sugar cookies and all the other confections I'm gonna share with you later. Hint, hint, watch, stay tuned. Um, so today I'm gonna to show you gingerbread cookies. These are crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. And I'm gonna show you, tell you a couple tricks later of how I make them taste so good. Cause they are, the whole family loves them. And we're not talking immediate family, we're talking extended family. So the first ingredient is one and a half sticks of butter or three quarters cup, and you want that melted. Just stick that in the microwave. That's really the best way to do it. And we've got three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. There's no white sugar in these. We're gonna cream that quick. All right, now we're gonna add some molasses. If you watched my other uh, Jack's Ginger Cookie recipe, I showed you a hack, I'll show you it again. Spray your measuring cup with some spray because molasses is very sticky and it'll come out better. So we need a half a cup of molasses. Now if your molasses is super thick and it's in a jar, put it in the microwave for a couple seconds and it will um, make it more pourable. The, the, when you're measuring honey out, spraying your measuring cup works the same. It's so much easier. If you want all that delicious molasses in there. Okay, now we're gonna give this, then we're gonna put also one egg in here. And give that a mix. All right, now on to our spices. We've got a teaspoon of vanilla, and you know I never measure, so give it a good glug. We've got a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, so. A teaspoon of cinnamon, ooh, this is my new cinnamon. That's one thing about spices. If you've had them in your cupboard for a long time, they lose their spiciness, especially cinnamon and ginger, if you don't go through them, as I go through them really fast. So um, you might wanna replenish those, because you really want the spice of the ginger. We want two teaspoons of ginger. Let's get a better measure here. I don't know why they don't make these better or easier to get out of the jar. Okay, two teaspoons of ginger. They are gingerbread cookies star of the show. They got a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And a teaspoon of baking soda. And this recipe probably makes uh, two dozen or so gingerbread cookies. So then we're gonna add three cups of flour in and give it a good mix. They already smell so good. Do you like making gingerbread cookies? You are a good student. You're gonna be the smartest cooking dog. All right, and just like my sugar cookie dough, you're going to want to refrigerate the gingerbread cookie dough because it is way too sticky to work with. So let's clean off a little bit here. 
So get out your saran wrap or your Costco stretch tight. Let's put that dough on there. All right, so you just pop your dough onto the saran wrap and get it all wrapped up. We're gonna put, pop it in the fridge for a couple hours till it's firm. So if you make, want to do all your cookies on a Saturday, make all your dough on a Friday night, pop them in the fridge, and then they'll be ready to go the next day. We'll pop it in the fridge. I'll be back in a couple hours. So our dough is nice and chilled. We're gonna unwrap it and get it rolled out. Now when it comes out of the fridge, depending on how long it's been in there, it does take a second to get work with, but I usually kind of roll it like this and work it with your hand to warm it up just a little. And as you work with it, it will soften. Man, it smells so good. This dough is really terrific if you want to make gingerbread houses with it. Um, you just want to roll it a little thicker and cook it a little longer. We've done that many, many years. But our favorite thing to do is eat it, whether it be the shape of little gingerbread people or just rounds even. Yeah, and if you do make a house, you're gonna wanna make multiple batches because it takes so much for the roof and the sides of the house. There's lots of patterns online you can use or you can make your own pattern if you feel creative. I just kind of take my time and roll it out. My counter's warm. That's how you get a workout. Boy, this is some stiff dough. You don't want to continue adding more flour unless your dough is really sticking to the um, rolling pin. Seems to be doing okay. Just want it just nice and even. and about that thick. Push it together if it breaks. All right, so I'll show you how to do, I just, if you don't have any cookie cutters, I, there's plastic ones, I've had this metal one for a long time. And you just start at one edge, cut. And this dough is a little thicker than my sugar cookie dough. This is probably why I just lay them on there really gentle. Get it floured. I try to squeeze them all the way over to the edge so that you're not wasting all your cuts. Then once again, we're just gonna roll the dough back into a ball, get all those pieces incorporated, then we'll roll it out again. All right, so we got those gingerbread cutouts all cut out. We're gonna put them in a 350 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, these are beautiful. They smell delicious. These smell so good. I can't even believe it. So the gingerbread cookies are out of the oven 
and now we're gonna have to wait for them to cool um, and then you can frost and I'll show you I'll probably show you one you can either choose like a buttercream which we'll probably put on there because my family's not so hot about the royal icing I love to put royal icing around these and then use like red hot for the eyes nose and put buttons down them um, so we're gonna let these cool and then we'll be back to frost Welcome back. Our gingerbread people and cookies have all cooled. I'm going to show you, walk you through how to make uh, royal icing if you'd like to royal ice them, or you can just use buttercream, whatever you'd like. The royal icing sets up better and it actually um, holds up a little better on them. So what you'll need is meringue powder, and you can get that at your craft store, like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. I haven't seen it. I don't know if I've seen it at the grocery store, but there's a recipe on it, and we're going to just use half of it today. So we're going to start out with two cups of powdered sugar. Actually, let's do less because I don't have that many cookies to do. And, and this is just egg, egg whites. I used to, I've made it one time with real egg whites, but I like, I like the cooked ones that are just the powder. So it says three tablespoons, so let's do one in a, one in a some. Okay, set that aside. I need my beaters, hang tight. All right, so I got my beaters. So if you are making gingerbread house, you will want the um, royal icing as your cement to glue your house together. Buttercream will not work. And you'll need to make this pretty thick. So um, you wanna add a tablespoon of water at a time. So I got four in here, I'm gonna add. Like I said, you can always add, but you can't take away. So I put about two tablespoons in there and you just kinda go to the consistency that you want. I can tell that I need more already. And all of a sudden it goes to frosting. Okay, I'm still gonna add more. getting there. I'm probably adding about a teaspoon at a time because I don't want to go over. All right, that looks about right. So we have the scissors. So I do use a piping bag and tips when I do this. I have a lot of tips from decorating over the years um, and I would recommend it definitely in this instance. You can pick up these at the craft, craft store too. There we go. Move my water out of the way, and then you're just gonna um, take a spatula, scoop it right in here. Almost looks like marshmallows. It sure does. Okay. This is loud. Okay, then you're just gonna take it and Squeeze it all down to the tip. The tip looks very loose. Is it all okay? Yeah, it's just the fitting. It's always been that way. So I don't know if you just saw, but I squirted a lid out on the spatula. So I just pull these towards me. And I know this is the, I can't believe it's not butter container, but there are red hots in here. A whole bunch of them. How long do you have that container? A long time. <laughs> So I'm right-handed and I want to pull always to the right when I'm putting on um, royal icing and then I just follow your little gingerbread 
all the way around. Give them some eyes and a nose. Give them three buttons. Use that as glue to stick them on. That's how I always like to do it. Um, if you want to turn this into a little girl, then I do a dress. Give her a little collar. This is my first one. That one's a bad one. Give her a skirt. And you can give her some shoelaces if you want. And some buttons on her dress. So you can really have a lot of fun with these. Decorate them however you want. These set up pretty quick. You can get creative. I mean, you can draw pants on these ones. Let's see if I can. Give him a belt. Shirt. Color. And if you don't like red hots, I mean, obviously leave them off. You can use all sorts of different kinds of candies to decorate these. So I'm just going to finish up. I'm just going to go around these and do basic outline again. Hey, thanks for joining me today to learn how to make gingerbread cookies. If you have uh, questions or comments, please leave them below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe and don't forget to turn the bell on for notifications. I hope you guys are starting to enjoy the holidays as they're coming up. Enjoy all the time with the family and friends and you guys have a great night tonight. I never knew what to do with my hands. Just be like your little cartoon girl. <laughs> Throw it in the freezer on a Friday night and then Saturday everything's ready to go for baking. I said it again. Here, let me back up. And cut! There you go. <laughs> Love in. And then we gotta get some sugar. Gonna taste good, I know.